August 24th, 1962. A typically hot, dry day in the high desert community known as Palmdale, a stop along Route 6, sitting on the edge of the Mojave Desert. Yet on that day, its 7,000 residents were about to experience the beginning of a change, really a transformation of their small town. It would be the beginning of a community that would chart its own destiny, a place that would be known as the aerospace capital of the United States, a place where each of the five space shuttles would be built, where the B-2 stealth bomber would be tested, built and flown, and where thousands of families would purchase their first home and raise their children in a safe community full of wonderful amenities, shopping experiences, and educational opportunities. With the stroke of a pen, all the dreams, all the years of hard work, the persistence, and great courage of a group of dedicated people came to fruition. The city of Palmdale was born. Hundreds of years before the city of Palmdale even became an idea, hunters and gatherers, such as the Katanamuk Indians, occupied the area. They depended mostly on the natural productivity of the land and ranged the foothills of what is now considered the Antelope Valley. It is believed that many other tribes also roamed the land at one time or another, including the Yokuts, Chumash, and Shoshone. Although California was discovered in the 16th century, it was not until a later part of the 18th century that it began to be explored. After several early expeditions led by explorers like Kit Carson and John C. Fremont, the Antelope Valley was left relatively undisturbed until the arrival of the railroad in 1876, which brought with it the early pioneers. The first small community developed at the crossroads of two major routes on the valley floor, the Southern Pacific Railroad and Fort Tejone Road, now known as Barrel Springs Road. The community of Harold had three names, Harold, Alpine Station, and Trejo Post Office. In 1886, about 60 families of Swiss and German descent, predominantly from Nebraska and Illinois, moved westward to California. They had been told that when they saw palm trees, they would be close to the Pacific Ocean. As they arrived in the Antelope Valley and saw the unusual looking Joshua trees, they mistook them for palm trees. They decided to settle in the area and call their town Palmenthal. Palmenthal soon gave way to Palmdale, and the only evidence of that early settlement now is the old Palmdale Cemetery on 20th Street East, which holds the remains of some of the city's pioneering families. Palmdale's population began to steadily increase in the early 20th century. From 250 residents in 1886, the city doubled in size to 500 people by 1929. By then, its residents were enjoying the new pavement that was installed in 1921 on its main road, which is today's Sierra Highway. This important thoroughfare was the valley's first viable and convenient link to Los Angeles. Agriculture remained the primary industry of the Anglo Valley until World War II. However, after the war, Palmdale grew as a center for aerospace and defense industries with the establishment of Edwards Air Force Base in neighboring Kern County. In 1951, the U.S. Air Force purchased approximately 5,800 acres of land from Los Angeles County and established U.S. Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale in 1953 as the premier production flight test installation in the world. It was during this time that the locals realized the necessity for incorporation. Despite the potential for growth, the resources they needed for the community were found to be extremely lacking. But always there was that burning desire in this community to be recognized, to be something, to be a place where people would want to live. So. Very quickly, the seeds of a new vision for Palmdale's future began to sprout and many community members dedicated their time and money to making their dream a reality. A group of civic leaders, who later became known as the 50 Grand Men, launched a fundraising campaign to begin the process of incorporating. We were simply pissed off with the county. The, we were receiving uh, no attention. The library at the time was a residence, an empty re vacant residence at the time, next to the fire station. 
Well, the city was growing, and of course, it was the aircraft that were really bolstered. And uh, we had people of uh, interest, uh, families, and we needed a, a library. So we pleaded with the library district, and uh, oh yes, they promised us a library, new library, for six years. Uh, we didn't like that too well. That was one of the issues. The uh, decisions involving General Antelope Valley in its entirety, those things all went to Lancaster. The juice, the horsepower was in Lancaster. Uh, naturally, we were not pleased. And it was during that time, Lakewood, I think, was the first um, contract city. And that seemed like a good idea, so we looked into it. Lancaster did too, but they failed twice. I did a lot of my shopping down in the valley. We did have a real nice penny store, a nice market. I think it was called Shopping Bag. It was. And we had a couple of gas stations and probably a couple of restaurants. And that's really about it. I would say most of the people who wanted to see growth were for it. They knew it would give us another avenue to pursue industry and so forth. We had the bell fire in our bellies. We had the desire, but we didn't know how to go about it. So when we raised the, the uh, $5,000, its purpose was to pay a consultant. Lancaster started at the same time we did, but they ended up in the tank. We had a lot of information in the newspapers uh, that I'm sure helped us some. But I think basically all the meetings we had at different clubs and the door-to-door -door contact is probably what got us over the hump that time. We were fortunate. We, 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 we met good people. We listened to them. We were dedicated to the principle that what we were going to do was going to make this a better place to live for ourselves, for our family, and for all of you people who have followed us. Palmdale was incorporated in 1962, forever transforming a small town community with no hotels and only a few restaurants into the gateway to the Antelope Valley and the front runner of development in the entire region. There was no pleading. It was by request of the ownership of those properties that we had the, uh, we won the right to have an election and we won. The vast majority in Palmdale were frustrated with the lack of county service. And that, I think, was the principal motivation. And uh, so they were quite eager. They came to the incorporation group and uh, wanted to get in. There were additional areas, but uh, with the recommendation of our consultant, he said, start small, control, not control, but cooperation. You can always annex. Beginning with only 2.1 square miles within its borders, the city grew slowly and steadily in size and population. By 1965, Palmdale measured 22.4 square miles, and just two decades later, it was twice as big. However, more growth, remarkable growth, was to come, and much of it was triggered by the completion of the Antelope Valley Freeway in 1974. With the 14 freeway open, 
the San Fernando Valley was a mere 30 minute drive from Palmdale. Easier access to LA made Palmdale an attractive location for commuters who would work down below and yet live in an affordable, less congested community. More residents also meant the need for more amenities and one of the first projects undertaken by the city was to open its own library with the same can-do attitude that led the city into incorporation, the residents of Palmdale toasted the opening of their very own Palmdale City Library in 1977. It was the first building constructed by the city of Palmdale and was paid for and funded by its citizens. Mary Kesselring, I had met her at the Women's Club and we had hit it off right away. And so she was a real library lover too and so uh, we decided that uh, we needed to have a library in the city and the city was just forming itself at that time and, and building the, uh, in the process of building the uh, culture center and all those buildings over there. And so we were talking to, uh, Bob Sinclair was uh, the mayor at the time and uh, so we got in touch with him and was asking him about this if he thought there was any chance of, of the city having a, its own library. And uh, they got a joint powers agreement for 10 years and they paid half of the cost for 10 years and the city paid, had the other half. And so uh, we knew we had to really work hard and, and, and fast. And of course we had a lot of people that were, you know, in favor of of a library, a bigger library, so there was no problem about doing that. Three years after the library opened its doors, the city introduced its iconic gathering place for meetings, social events, and gatherings with the introduction of the Palmdale Cultural Center. It was dedicated as the Larry Chimboli Cultural Center after Palmdale's first mayor, Larry Chimboli, and one of the city's integral 50 grand men. With a new civic area now developed, Palmdale would now see what would be its greatest period of residential growth. With attractive and affordable housing and a drivable commute to LA, Palmdale became a place for young families to get their start and participate in the American dream of home ownership. During the 1980s, Palmdale was the fastest growing city in the state, increasing from a population of 12,227 in 1980 to 68,842 in 1990. The opening of the Antelope Valley Mall in 1990 and the Antelope Valley Auto Center in 1991 heralded in another dimension of growth, this time in the retail sector. No longer did residents of the Antelope Valley have to travel 50 miles away for quality shopping. It was all right here in Palmdale. You know, Palmdale was the stepchild, always was the stepchild. And so, mid 80s, that started to change. The mall was a big, uh, effort for us and we got it. That changed the dynamic because we truly became the center of the universe for retail. And that was important for us because sales tax, you know, you have, you have to have resources to be able to, to do things in a city. And these were great times, lots of growth. The mall was doing very good and lots of other retail development was coming in and around that. But we changed the paradigm and that rocked a lot of people's boat. And so other competitors were heavily subsidizing companies to stay in their community, where we didn't have to subsidize hardly at all. Meanwhile, the aerospace industry remained the area's largest source of employment, providing thousands of good paying jobs for AV residents, as well as playing a vital role in the safety and security of our nation. The quality of life also improved greatly for Palmdale residents as the city expanded its programs, events, and activities. The popular summertime Starlight Concert Series began taking the stage at McAdam Park in 1990, and by 1994, the city opened its own community theater, the Palmdale Playhouse, bringing a mission to provide Palmdale residents with professional community-based theater and cultural arts. Growth continued to catapult through the 1990s as Palmdale was named the fastest growing city in the nation from 1990 through 1996 and its population soared to 117,324 by 1998. The year 2000 rang in not only a new century, 
but also another decade of solid growth in Palmdale. Popular retailers continue to join the ranks of Target, Barnes & Noble, Lowe's, Best Buy, Trader Joe's, Bed Bath & Beyond, and TJ Maxx, which were the first of their kind to arrive in the Aloe Valley and made Palmdale the shopping destination for the entire high desert. In addition, special events and recreational facilities expanded to provide further services and cultural amenities for Palmdale residents. There's an active square, a weekly summer festival debuted in 2000 at Ponsalon Square in downtown Palmdale and continues to attract thousands each week. And with the passing of the city's Vision for the Future Parks projects, Palmdale citizens knew they could expect a superior quality of life in our beautiful city. It included a new recreation center, Palmdale Oasis Park, a swimming pool and water park, Dry Town Water Park, on the east side of town. Marie Kerr Park on the west side was also expanded with the addition of the Best of the West softball complex, featuring eight world-class year-round softball fields and the Antelope Valley's premier outdoor entertainment venue, the Palmdale Amphitheater, which is now the home of the Starlight Concert Series. It was called the Parks Project back then. Uh, he said another gentleman, Raul Figueroa, uh, would also um, be the other co-chair. I didn't know Raul. His thing was softball, again, mine was swimming. So we took on that role as the co-chairs, and we had a committee. So that's what the Parks Committee uh, was there for. We were um, in on meetings, what exactly was going to happen, what was going to be available if this uh, measure passed by the property owners. It was going to be about $26 million. It's going to go over about 30 years payment. Uh, so, you know, this is what the property owners would have to step up and do. But if they did, they were promised, and. And we had heard many broken promises from Los Angeles and things like this if we would invest in bonds and we would reap benefits, and we never did. Uh, this bond would, would stay home, and we listed all the things that we would have, and we promised that we would stay with it and we would get what they were going to pay for. And we don't want to have to always drive, you know, a half hour, an hour to have a family experience. You know, we want to, and, and plus, it, it, it helped our property values. I know times are tough now, but no matter what, it increased the, uh, the value of our property having such wonderful uh, facilities all around us. So uh, uh, I, I think it says a lot for the people of Palmdale. The opening of Macy's in 2010 solidified the Antelope Valley Mall as the retail powerhouse in the area, and additional restaurants such as The Yard House, Claim Jumper, Soup Plantation, and Buffalo Wild Wings continue to provide a wide selection of cuisine in the valley. Other businesses contributing to Palmdale's economy include the film industry, solar energy, as well as the potential for future success in the planned Palmdale Hybrid Power Plant. In 2007, NASA Dryden Flight Research Center opened a satellite aircraft operations facility at Air Force Plant 42 Site 9, where the SOFIA Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy project is based. U.S. Air Force Plant 42 is also home to Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, and is the home of the B-1 and B-2 bombers, the Space Shuttle, and Next Generation Space Shuttle X-33, solidifying Palmdale's reputation as the aerospace capital of the United States. Well, NASA coming to Palmdale, Site 9, I think was a huge uh, step for us as a community because NASA came on their own. We didn't have to incentivize them. They brought 200 high-paying jobs because they saw Palmdale as the best opportunity for NASA to develop the day off, which is uh, out at Site 9. So that was monumental. It told me that the story had taken, that, that our, uh, what we are as a community, that there was buy-in. And so NASA coming to Palmdale, they started with the Aero Institute, bringing the educational components of, of NASA education. This is nationwide. And uh, once that came, I thought, well, that's huge. But that was just the beginning. Because Site 9, that building, what they put into that building, and again, the 200 good paying jobs, it created a, a, a perfect tenant for our community. It fits very nicely with the other, other aerospace contractors who are doing just great guns out here. We're doing a lot of unmanned aerial vehicle development right now, and our goal is to try to get more of that type of work. Our partners are here for a reason, and I think it's because of the location, 
the technology is based here, and then the, the affordability of the region when you compare it to some high cost areas like Los Angeles, where a median price home can be $500,000. You can come out here to the Antelope Valley and get a beautiful home for half the price. And so these become big issues for corporations. Where are our employees going to live and play? And, and quality of life becomes a big deal. So we've done a lot to address the, the needs for industry and manufacturing to come based on quality of life, crime rate, schools, the lay of the, of the, of the blueprint for our city. Attitude, all of these things play into whether a company is going to come or not. So I think today we're certainly more, we're better able to compete in that arena. And uh, as far as aerospace, it is our main anchor. Palmdale's future definitely looks bright as the opening of the state-of-the-art Palmdale Regional Medical Center in 2010 has presented another high potential for growth in the medical sector in Palmdale. The city also looks to be the intermodal hub for the Antelope Valley with the Palmdale Transportation Center providing citizens with access to local bus lines, commuter rail, the state's planned high-speed rail system, and connections to a future Palmdale Regional Airport. But the key here is to, to keep the compatibility. We do not want to become a, a reason for our aerospace partners to leave. We want to be the reason they stay. And so conflicting uh, agendas sometimes can, can give them a reason to move on. But our city has done a, a lot in preparation. Uh, our airport, for instance, we probably have the best land use plan for an airport in Southern California, maybe in the Western United States. The buffering is here. The noise corridors have been laid out. We, we restrict development in areas where it's incompatible. So we've done a lot of the things that communities you see elsewhere are uh, fighting. Little things that add up over time will make a company leave or make an airport become less viable. And I think we've got a lot of those issues, at least the basis is in play. And as we move forward, I think our attitude is correct and I think the opportunity exists. In Southern California, for instance, the job opportunities we have at Plant 42 and, and the surrounding property uh, once developed, we get the transportation linkage, I think you're going to find industry and manufacturing going to be more motivated to look for a place to own where they may have paid to lease elsewhere. So what began as an idea? A dream some 50 years ago by a handful of community leaders who simply wanted to take control of their destiny and build a city for their children and children's children has become the reality known as the city of Palmdale. It has been an amazing journey with many successes along the way and a promise to its residents of yesterday, today, and the future. The promise to make a home we can all be proud of and we certainly are proud. Happy 50th birthday, Palmdale. We talked great dreams. We uh, envisioned and spoke of uh, great advances in the, in the culture, in the facilities, in the, uh, uh, and, and, and we, we, we met it from our hearts, but we really didn't know what we were talking about. So all of this and all that is yet to come will not surprise me. Complete as a city with the services, the amenities, the comfort, the pride. So sustainability is the key to the future of Palmdale. We've got to get sustainable in every way, whether it's resources, whether it's the environment, whether it's our own personal lifestyle. Uh, we need to do better in that regard, and that's really kind of been our mantra now for the last couple of years. We all seem to come back sooner or later. To Palmdale. Yeah, because it's our town. Mm -hmm.